Hello everyone and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I made over $378,000 from YouTube automation alone within a single year. And keep watching until the end because you're going to get a very good idea on how to do YouTube automation for your own channel so that you can also hit this level of revenue from your channels as well. But before we begin I do want to invite you to watch my free masterclass training after this video where I go over my 10 ways to go viral on YouTube and start earning passive income. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to go over is choosing a good niche. So it's a common question I always get asked and I can tell you how many people are going to niches which I really don't think is going to work for them. So when it comes to niche selection there's two types of niches for YouTube automation and it mainly comes from the visual aspect of it. So and one type of niche you have niches that are using stock footage and then the other type of niches you have niches that are using copyrighted footage right. So the niches that are using copyright footage are usually like sports niches, celebrity niches, TV show niches, movie niches. And then the niches that are not using copyrighted footage, maybe sometimes they can, but we're talking about like health and fitness, medical. We're talking about psychology. We're talking about make money online. They use a lot of business slash stock footage. Finance uses a lot of business slash stock footage. So when I watch a video on YouTube and I see like copyrighted footage of LeBron James playing, you do see how I get more relatable to that type of footage just because I actually recognize the person. Now, I'm Imagine with the sports niche that you were using stock footage and you just have visuals on the screen of stock footage of people playing basketball at the park. Do you see the major key difference between both types of niches? I'm not saying stay away from niches that have to use stock footage. I've seen niches that use stock footage and they do work. But keep in mind though that if this is your first channel, I do recommend trying to fall under fair use and using copyrighted footage just because that'll improve engagement. And niches that are using stock footage, I do find are a lot harder to grow just because there's not that relatability there. But again, that comes with the double edged swords though. If you're going to the make money online niche, what other types of visuals are you going to use? You can do screen recordings, you can do whiteboard animations, you can do animations. Think about the niche selection. It's a com very common question that people are always coming me to with. And once you have a niche that works, I always recommend starting that niche over again. So if I can go back in time, one of the things that I would do is that I probably would have just stuck all my channels in the sports niche. I would have just done basketball over and over and over again. I can leverage my existing audiences into that niche. Therefore, I wouldn't have to grow completely from ground zero. So choose a good niche. Make sure that's something that you know more than the average person about. Make sure that it's something that you're passionate about. Make sure that it's something that you consume constant knowledge on a daily basis about so that if someone who didn't know your niche were to come into the game, you would still be able to quote unquote beat them. Now moving on to the second thing, you want to make sure that you're able to choose good topics and choosing good topics has been absolutely crucial in allowing me to net over $370,000 from YouTube. So good places to find good topics, you've got Google, you've got Yahoo, both Google News and Yahoo News, and then you've got the competitor scorecard from TubeBuddy. So with those three sources already, you should be able to find good topic ideas. And you also want to make sure that whatever you're finding, it's keeping up with the trending slash whatever's happening in current day, current time. So with topics, a very important thing to keep in mind, or basically some staple topics that have worked for me, are topics talk about one party versus another. So what I mean by this is that, let's say that it's Jake Paul versus Anderson Silva. People like few topics. Let's say topics about something shocking, shocking factor. So that just happened with X. So I've already given you like two power type of topics that I usually aim for. And number one, it's a feud factor in which it's, the topic involves one party versus another party. And the second one is that shocking factor. So it's when someone does a thing that will amaze people or kind of shock people. So that that, that happens a lot within the celebrity chat sports world. Or let's pretend that your favorite TV show gets canceled. So that's two types of topics that you can be looking for. And if you ever come across my channels or viral videos in general, you'll see that they usually have one of these two elements, if not both. Now, the third reason why I do believe I was able to take over $378,000 just from YouTube ad revenue alone is because of thumbnails. So if there's three skills that I recommend people learn when it comes to YouTube automation, the first skill is topic research, which is also why the YouTube success system has topic research training on it. The second skill is being able to title your videos creatively, titling them for human experience. And then the third skill is creating thumbnails. I think that every YouTube automation channel owner should learn a little graphic design in order to create thumbnails. Just because I feel like if you have that creative mindset to run a YouTube automation channel, it'll make it a lot easier for you if you can just create the thumbnails yourself. So with thumbnails, I create my own thumbnails through Photoshop. I taught myself Photoshop, but I'm able to create a thumbnail within like one to three minutes. But the idea of the thumbnail is worth thousands of dollars. So 
tying to what I said, creating a really good thumbnail will net you a lot of revenue. And especially with time sensitive videos, videos that in which the news just occurred hours ago, you don't want to be waiting for your thumbnail graphic designer to create your thumbnails tomorrow. You want it ASAP, right? Especially if the video is already ready. So learn how to create thumbnails yourself. This is also a reason why I have thumbnail success system within the YouTube success system. And it's where I teach people how to use Photoshop to create thumbnails themselves. So the fourth reason that has led me to make over $378,000 from YouTube ad revenue alone is by using TubeBuddy. So with TubeBuddy, the two main key features that I use from TubeBuddy, and just as a disclaimer, it is a paid plan. It's setting of split tests for thumbnails and it's also using a scorecard competitor research. So with TubeBuddy, when you pay for the most expensive plan, it's called the Legend Plan, you're gonna be able to set up split tests on your thumbnail. So it's basically having a single video and giving that video two chances to work by having two thumbnails alternate every 24 hours between them. And TubeBuddy has a statistical significance goal for your thumbnails in which once it's determined that one thumbnail is 95% likely to be better than the other thumbnail, it'll automatically upload that thumbnail and then that thumbnail will be the permanent thumbnail for that video. So TubeBuddy has allowed me to set up these split tests on autopilot. And with these tests that run, I have had videos that have gone viral because of TubeBuddy split tests. And it's so much worth worth the money. You know, if a video that goes viral ends up making $3,000, $7,000, $10,000 over the course of its lifetime, TubeBuddy, it's only like 300 bucks per year, I think. So definitely worth the money. I do have an affiliate link just as a scammer down below in the description if you're interested. Now, as for the scorecard for competitor research, I do like TubeBuddy because you can input like 10 channels that are related to your niche and you can analyze what all 10 of those channels are posting and seeing what their most recently uploaded videos are so that you can see what videos work for them and what videos have not worked for them. So if you had an idea for a YouTube video that you were planning to post or you were planning to create, but your competitor posted it already and it didn't work for them, that kind of sways me to think like, maybe I shouldn't try that topic idea. So TubeBuddy, it's a great tool. I do recommend it. Now, the fifth thing that has led me to making over $378,000 from YouTube is training my team. By all means, the asset with YouTube automation it's also a good chunk, but I'd say your most valuable asset is actually your team. So with training my team, I've taught them to do specific things based on all the analytics that I've gone through over the course of my years of doing YouTube automation. So I would go in and understand where drops and rises occurred from analytics. So one of the key biggest things that I've noticed where people would drop off from a video, and I've seen this on constantly through videos, is that when my script writer would write, subscribe to the channel, comment down below, turn on notification bell, I always noticed that there was a drop whenever that was said. So with that, through that analysis, I have now trained my team to say, hey, don't even ask people to subscribe. We don't need subscribers. We need people to watch the video. So this is what I mean by point number one, in which I understand where drops and rises occurred from analytics. And based on those rises and drops, I've kind of catered my team to learn to do things where the drops occurred and where the rises occurred. Second thing is understanding what thumbnails have worked before in the past. So within the YSS community, I give individuals two templates of thumbnails that work extremely well for YouTube automation. So the first thumbnail template is like a breaking news type style template. And the second type of thumbnail is like a split screen type style thumbnail. And so from analyzing a ton of thumbnails, I'm able to kind of use the same concept of the thumbnail across multiple different niches just because that template of a thumbnail works. Now, the third thing as far as training my team goes, it's understanding what video editors, what voiceover artists, and what script writers have written previously viral videos. So if I'm starting a new channel and that a video on the channel works, I'll specifically see who wrote the script, who voiced the voice, and then who did the video edit. And then those three people who actually made that viral video, they're gonna be permanently assigned to that channel. So that to me has kind of been a game changer just because it's like proven, it's proven that the script writer has the capabilities, it's proven that the voiceover artist has a really good voice, and it's proven that that video editor knows how to retain viewers. So training my team, vetting my team, uh, making adjustments based on that, that's all led to help me kind of make all this money from YouTube ads. Now, the sixth thing that's helped me make a lot of money from YouTube is understanding my audience. So from understanding my audience, as cliche as it sounds, and I preach this all the time in other videos as well, you wanna go into a niche which you know more than the average person. And the reason why is because if you know your niche well enough, you can trigger emotional responses based on the titles that you create. You can trigger emotional responses based on the thumbnails that you create. And so with those emotional responses, that leads to higher click-through rate. And as long as the video has a catchy intro, higher click-through rate should hopefully lead to a 
a good average duration. And with those two key metrics, you'll have a video that gets put into the algorithm. So the next thing is with understanding your audience, you should have a good gist of, okay, if an audience comes into my channel and watches this video, what video will they want to watch next? With end screens, I'm talking more about end screens when I said that statement, but with end screens, a lot of people are just doing the end screen for most recently uploaded, or they're doing the end screen for best possible match. That's okay, but I go above and beyond. And with my videos, every time I upload a video or every time I tell my uploaders to upload a video, I want them to choose a specific video that they think or I think the audience will want to watch next. It only should take like 15 to 30 seconds of your time, but the concept with this here of connecting videos, it really teaches you to know that one person who arrives at your channel, they can essentially watch two videos. And one person who arrives in your channel, they can essentially watch three videos. So once you grasp this concept of knowing that one individual doesn't only have to equate to one view, one individual can watch multiple videos. You and I, we're guilty of doing that. We watch multiple videos of a single channel. So connecting videos is absolutely key. Imagine if you got all of the individuals who arrived in your channel to watch at least two of your videos. Would that not be a 100% increase in your viewership? So grasp this concept, utilize end screens wisely and can start connecting your videos. Now, understanding my audience, the third point that this ties to is coming up with pioneer video topics myself. So with research, you don't always have to gain, acquire ideas from other people. Okay, that's a good method or good strategy to start off with. But once you understand your audience, you can start creating videos that have never been done before and those videos will work. So pioneer video topics. These are topics that don't derive from other sources. If you're able to come up with topics yourself, I think it's a good sign that you truly understand your audience and not every single YouTuber. Think about all the YouTubers that you watch. They don't derive their content ideas from other sources. Sometimes they just think about it themselves. And at the times that I've done this, it actually has worked extremely well to the point in which I can just think of topics ideas that I think my audience would want, want to watch. And with that comes a brand new video, a topic idea that no one has ever done before that's fresh to the audience's minds and therefore they want to click and watch it. Now the seventh thing when it comes to what's led me to making over $378,000 a year from YouTube is understanding my analytics. So this kind of ties to the analysis portion which I previously talked about in which I really try to understand why certain click through rates do better than others. So this comes from like the power thumbnail templates that I was talking about before such as the split screen style thumbnail or the breaking news type style thumbnail. I try to understand why certain videos had a better performing first 30 second audience retention time. So the first 30 second retention time is extremely important because it's a fact in which if you can get people to watch past the first 30 seconds of your video, they're more likely to watch the rest of your video as well. So with my video editors, I don't tell them to, you know, make the video better overall, but I have very, very, very specific instructions of how the introduction of a video should go because I feel like if you put all your time and effort into the first 30 seconds, a lot of time and effort gets put into there, the rest of your video can be okay and your video will still get a good average view duration. So that ties to point number three in which why certain videos had a better average view duration than others. And it's because we really try to test out different types of intros and hooks within the first 30 seconds of a video. So with that, I do want to, after this video, also invite you to check out my new channel called Started With YouTube Automation, where I go from $0 per month to $100,000 per month with a brand new channel or dead channels through YouTube Automation.